Okay. Now, welcome to the Sonosite Behind the Scan webinar called Using Ultrasound to Evaluate the Lateral Ankle. Uh, this is the last in a four-part series about ankle ultrasound. And if you'd like to check out the previous webinars in this series, you can visit our webinars page on sonosite.com. With that out of the way, we can get up today's presentation started. My name is Chris Pennell, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Before we begin, please be advised all attendees are muted. You can type your questions into the Q&A box in the toolbar located at the bottom or the side of your screen. We conduct uh, that Q&A session at the end of the presentation and demonstration. And this webinar will be recorded and archived for future reference on our webinars page. Here with us today, we have Daniel Shelton. Daniel is the Director of Musculoskeletal Market Development for Fujifilm Sonosite. Daniel has spent 18 years as a dedicated musculoskeletal sonographer, and 12 of those years have been here at Sonosite. He now leads musculoskeletal market development, where he works to spread the word about the benefits of point-of-care ultrasound. Uh, today's webinar is going to be a very thorough examination of the lateral ankle, so I'll turn it over to Daniel to get started. Very excited to uh, give these slides and wrap up the ankle series and um, add it to the collection of the other joints that we've concluded. Again, here's our indications for ankle foot and ankle ultrasound by the AIUM. You can check those out on their excellent website. And on the lateral structures today, we're going to be focusing on these bulleted structures. Now, I will say the ATFL was covered in depth on the, the front of the ankle on the anterior uh, presentation, so we won't belabor that one too much today, but we do have a few slides on it. Uh, but primarily, we're going to be covering the perineus brevis, perineus longus tendons, the anterior talofibular ligament, the posterior talofibular ligament, and the calcaneofibular ligament. But let, let's uh, first start with the bony anatomy, like we always do. We start at the bones and work our way up, and uh, today's no different. We're going to start with the fibula. Um, laterally, it hangs down much lower than the tibia, so it makes it an excellent landmark. It articulates with the talus, and uh, we also have, uh, sorry, it articulates with the tibia and um, creates this um, tibiofibular joint, but it's our main lighthouse of a landmark here. We've already covered the articulations of the talus and the calcaneus, so I won't read these bullets. They're in uh, previous presentations. Um, but let's get to the live demonstration. Just cover our bony anatomy. That way we, we have a base to kind of get started on here. All right, so now we'll get started on the live scan. Um, I do want to introduce the transducers that we'll be using today. Today we'll be scanning on the Sonosite PX ultrasound system, and we're going to be using the uh, linear 15 to 4 megahertz transducer, prim or not necessarily primarily, but we'll be going back and forth and showing the benefits between the larger linear on the lateral ankle and the smaller uh, L19 to 5 uh, transducer. So 19 megahertz, smaller footprint, fits in those tight spaces a lot nicer. So um, we'll go ahead and get started with the larger linear, the 15.4, just to go do the anatomy survey of our um, bony ankle features. So let me get that set. Scan. I use a lot of gel on the lateral ankle, so you're going to notice a, a large bead of gel here, and I'll probably go ahead and just start with the large uh, bead of gel just right where I'm going to be scanning. So I start in cross-section right here on the posterior um, lateral malleolar area, and we're going to look at the fibula, the uh, posterior tibia, talus, and calcaneus. Big bead of gel to fill that uh, air gap that typically occurs when we're scanning the lateral ankle. And um, I like to put the cord around my wrist and the left side of the screen. Okay, I'm going to keep the left side of the screen towards the malleolus, which is pretty, pretty typical. It's a great landmark. So we're going to float that right through there. And I'm just hanging my finger right underneath um, the gel surface as a standoff kind of stabilizer to keep my hand from floating so much I rest all the weight of the transducer onto my finger first and then down to the uh, in this case the calcaneus but I'm just going to slowly lower that um, transducer footprint in the gel just like that so here we have the arrow so here's the fibula okay and you can see that retro malleolar groove um, we can actually see the, the, the retinaculum going over the, the perineals there, but let's focus on the bones. If I stay up high and posterior, 
Uh, deep, we have the tibia here. I'm going to drop my frequency by hitting gin there. And uh, so here we have the posterior tibia, the posterior fibula. Okay, and then I'm just going to swing the distal part of my probe um, or the posterior side of the probe, which is on the Achilles side, which we can see the Achilles back here, just as a FYI, where we are on the anatomy. Here's the Achilles, Kager's fat pad. Um, so way up here is posterior uh, tibia, and then I'm going to swing and keep this part pivoted, the distal or posterior side of the probe planted. So here's the talus. So we saw a big jump in where the bone is. So right there's a big jump. There's nothing there. And then we see the tibia talus. So it's just a windshield wiper maneuver of um, pivoting between tibia and talus. And that's going to come really important when it comes time to scan these ligaments. Further posterior, we're going to plant fibular side of the transducer and keep windshield wipering down to the calcaneus. And you can see that long neck of the calcaneus. That'll be a huge landmark for us as we uh, continue the scan. And then if I translate the entire probe distally now, um, we should hit the posterior lateral subtalar joint. So this is talus, calcaneus. And then if I keep going posterior, or sorry, not posterior, inferior and lateral, we've fallen onto the cuboid bone, which uh, houses this, this nice little uh, tubercle here. And then we'll go long axis on these structures here. And then another structure that'll come um, in later with the tendon exam is the base of the fifth metatarsal. And I just tell people to go ahead and feel for the, the shaft of that base of the fifth metatarsal and work your way uh, proximally until it falls off. When it falls off, bring that to the side of your screen and then pivot the transducer, the rest of the transducer, up to the malleolus. And that'll, that'll help us uh, get these two bones in the same shot with the larger linear array transducer. Um, that about does it for the bony survey. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started on the slides for our ankle ligaments. All right, ligaments of the ankle. Um, ATFL, which we did cover in the first anterior ankle presentation, it does articulate with the distal, or it, it originates at the distal fibula and inserts on the um, distal talus right here at this little tubercle. I don't know the name of that tubercle, but it's very prominent on ultrasound. And basically we just fan the ultrasound beam over the cartilage until we see that pronounced tubercle, and that is um, just about 100% of the time where you find it. Here's that little tubercle. Uh, here's what it's going to look like, and uh, this nice little bridge of connective tissue makes up the ligament. And our probe orientation here is slightly oblique, and it's pretty pretty easy to find once you just plant the probe on the fibula and pivot or windshield wiper the distal portion of the probe. Um, then posteriorly, its counterpart is the PTFL. Its origin is the lateral malleolar fossa. The insertion is the lateral talar tubercle. It is the strongest of these. So um, also similar scanning orientation. It's relatively horizontal and slightly oblique when you're scanning relative to the anatomy model that you see here. Uh, it's, it's harder to visualize. It shows up as this uh, prominent shadow underneath the fibula. So we'll see this anisotropic shadow here attaching to the talus. Uh, then you're just going to want a windshield wiper um, the finger side of the probe here, the Achilles side of the probe, and catch all of its insertions across the talus. But its original, its origin is the lateral malleolar fossa. Its insertion is the lateral talar tubercle. This one's a little bit more fun to look at uh, the calcaneal fibular ligament. Um, I think of the ligaments of the lateral ankle, it's the most practical and it's right there in our lighthouse view once we get to the pronial tendons too. Its origin is a lateral malleolar tip. The insertion is a calcaneal tro uh, trochlear eminence. It does traverse under the pronial tendons um, and it does provide lateral support of the subtalar joint. Um, incidentally, it often tears with the ATFL tears too. But this is the um, illustration that I've got here, and what you'll notice is a lot of the fibers are very anterior on the fibula, and we'll, we'll check that out in the live scan. Probe orientation. You can see how oblique we are, uh, slightly on the superior surface of the calcaneus. Uh, we should see the really nice ligament here um, supporting the pronius brevis and longus tendons right over the posterior lateral subtalar joint. All right, let's get to the live demonstration of these ligaments. And um, 
share some uh, scanning tips and tricks. All right, let's get to those ligaments. Here we've got the same plant that we did earlier. Lots of gel back here. Now let's focus on what those shadows were. All right, so how do I know if this is a tibia or talus? We just need to exhaust all of our options. So it's that windshield wiper sweep up. I see a tibia back there on a ligament we're not gonna focus on. And then down we see this, this oblique shadow. So this oblique shadow right here is that posterior um, talo fibular ligament. All right, and it is a challenge to see. So you have to kind of bury the Achilles side of the transducer in because we have this huge gap here where it, it is hard to dig in. So um, I do have part of the transducer making it hard to see because of the Achilles being in the way. And then the other part of the transducer hard to manipulate because the fibula is in the way. So we have to rely on not only sweeping our transducer up and down, and here's that nice ligament, uh, maybe try a little bit of dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. And let's get that talus to move, do some inversion maneuvers. And I think we catch a little bit nicer ligament that way. So I'm inverting the foot, maybe even catching some old scar tissue right there in the middle of that ligament. That's kind of cool, right in there where it looks irregular, stays hyperechoic no matter which way in a, in a very anisotropic environment, typically scar. All right, so that does it for that ligament. Now let's keep windshield wipering posteriorly. This is where it might be a bit of a challenge. There we go, that's really nice. Bring our depth up more shallow. Double tap our ABC key to get the arrow back up. But um, one scanning tip for the fibulocalcaneal ligament or calcaneal fibular ligament is uh, fall off of the fibula right here. So here's fibula. Here's calcaneus. Here's the perineal tendons that we'll, we'll get to. But I'm going to fall off the fibula, so my thumb side on the scanning there. And then you already see this horizontal band. And those are the, the ligament fibers that now it's just, a, it's just a twisting of the transducer clockwise and counterclockwise until you elongate this band here. But that is our uh, um, calcaneo fibular ligament right there and then you can see the peroneal tendon sitting on top of it like a hammock pretty easy to get to so um, only scanning pearl there is to fall off the fibula if you feel frustrated like if you get this image here we have some ligament here and don't stop there because we need to see a little bit more of the origin and all the anatomy diagrams that you'll see they really do show this ligament starting on the edge of the fibula but if you'll notice on ultrasound we can see uh, with with even more accuracy this ligament wraps around to the anterior fibula a bit right there. So we're off the tip of the malleolus here, and we can see the fibers are still continuing to the front side of that lateral fibular malleolus right there. So don't forget to check the origin of that ligament. Get that nice bridge all the way across there. Um, plantar and dorsiflexion will uh, stress these fibers. And you can see that ligament bouncing up and down. You can also do inversion maneuvers, but plantar and dorsiflexion is really going to get that thing to bounce. So dynamic maneuvers. This is ultrasound. Do everything you can to make it move. All right. Now, finally, a little bit of a redundant review on the anterior talofibular ligament, uh, which we did cover in the first webinar, but I do want to kind of go over that is... Um, find our anterior fibula, and we're gonna windshield wiper, maneuver. Here we go, anterior fibula, talus, and then that little dark shadow right there, that stripe is our ATFL. Uh, if you want a more in-depth review of that ligament, which we have already covered on the anterior ankle webinar, uh, I suggest that you go back to that and uh, catch where we did kind of a deep dive on that ligament. but. That covers the ligaments for the lateral ankle, and we'll get into those tendons. All right, let's start the tendons of the lateral ankle. Um, not too many to cover. There's just two that we're going to focus on today. First is the peroneus brevis tendon. Its origin is the distal two-thirds of the lateral fibula. Uh, its insertion is the base of the fifth metatarsal. It's responsible for eversion of the foot, and it limits inversion 
But uh, one thing of note is this large um, muscle, distal musculotendinous junction, which does get right up to the retinaculum that we're going to be imaging here. Peel that away, and you can see the um, perineus longus tendon, which its origin is uh, the proximal two-thirds of the lateral fibular head, or the lateral fibula and fibular head, its insertions on the plantar base of the first metatarsal and the medial cune uh, cuneiform. It does plantar flex the ankle and is responsible for foot eversion, and then it supports the arch. As you can see, they do kind of create a little crisscross once we're in the live scanning You'll notice that a little bit more than we're seeing here in the model, but um, it does have a really nice synovial tendon sheath. It's very easy to scan, and you're going to want to use a gel standoff to make that more pronounced. But um, scanning these, we typically start in a transverse orientation right at the lateral malleolus, uh, cutting posteriorly, and uh, we're just going to stay on the fibula and pivot the distal end of the probe or the posterior end of the probe uh, towards the calcaneus uh, in a windshield wiper-like fashion. And there's also dynamic maneuvers that we'll do in the live scan. But we're going to be focusing on the perineus longus and brevis. Brevis is on the bottom, longus is on the top, and it stays that way all the way to the fibula calcaneal ligament, or calcaneal fibular ligament, sorry. And then we want to take note of this um, peroneal retinaculum that straps these tendons down to the fibula at the retromalleolar groove. As we go long axis, the brevis and longus are kind of blended in. Take note of the transducer angle that we have here. Um, we're not scanning just straight into the coronal plane of the ankle. We're, we're scanning posteriorly, but sagittally in, in the overall ankle, and it gives a nice bony backboard. And we'll cover that in the scanning tips in the live scan of that as well. But all these tendons run the same direction at the malleolar level, much like I've discussed in the previous webinars. Um, but, but keep in mind, once we leave that fibula. Once we leave the malleolar level, these tendons tend to go off in all kinds of various different directions, and that's something that I'll also be covering in the live scan a little bit more. As we go distal to the fibula, uh, these these tendons jump over the calcaneal fibular ligament, as we previously discussed. Uh, the superficial most one of these, at least at this point, is the perineus longus, and then the deeper one is the perineus brevis. At this point, they make that crisscross that I had mentioned where the brevis will then start to shoot more superficially and ride its way to the base of the fifth metatarsal. And the perineus longus is going to be the one that dies really deep. It's very anisotropic, and if symptoms warrant uh, for you to scan to the base of the first metatarsal, then, then we can go to the bottom of the foot. But typically, after the peroneal tubercle, we really don't have to scan much further unless the symptoms warrant uh, that you chase it down to the, to the arch of the foot. Um, we do need to cover the base of the fifth metatarsal for this examination. The peroneus brevis does insert on the base of the fifth metatarsal. Uh, typically fine if you just palpate your finger on the base of the fifth metatarsal and run your transducer towards the malleolus that you catch a very nice um, long axis of this tendon. Let's get to the live demo where, where all the scanning is uh, and, and it's easier to teach these tricky tendons as they traverse these different directions. All right, let's scan these tendons. So again, more gel makes everything in the ankle look better. Big bead of gel, uh, posterior fibula. We're gonna go right back into that retromalleolar groove. We're gonna cut the um, ankle into a axial slice. Again, hanging a finger down to stabilize our gel heap. And we see a really nice uh, fibula. Again, we're at the level of the retinaculum. And you can just windshield wiper across until you elongate the retinaculum down to the calcaneus if you feel the need to. But right here at that posterior malleolus is where uh, we're going to do a dynamic maneuver. So what I'm going to do is lift up the ankle. We're going to have our model just do some ankle rolls. So we're just going to, yep, go into a rolling motion. And this is where it's really important to use that finger as a stabilizer so that we know we're not pushing the tendons down and keeping them from subluxing. But those tendons are just rolling in that retromalleolar groove. They're not perching or subluxing on top of the groove. Uh, another great dynamic exam. Let's go ahead and relax. But yeah, we just want to make sure that these are not crisscrossing, that I'm not getting the perineus longus herniating through the perineus brevis, and uh, that the 
integrity of this retinaculum, this wedge up here, uh, maintains intact. This is a good time to switch over to the 19 megahertz transducer, which is a little easier to do that dynamic maneuver because we had so much transducer having to be bridged by all that gel, it made it a little tough. So we're going to be looking with 19 megahertz now. And uh, this transducer starts with the depth zoomed out quite a bit for perspective. So it's not like you're putting your nose right on the glass. Uh, but I'm going to bring up the depth just a bit there. And now we can see more detail in the tendons, even maybe more importantly on this exam, more detail in that retinaculum to make sure that uh, we don't have any tears in the retinaculum. And then I'm just going to raise her ankle up again, and we're going to do slow rolls. There we go. And let's just watch that retinaculum edge. I'm going to put my thumb on the front side of the malleolus to help kind of stabilize the transducer while we do this roll. So my thumb's on the front of the malleolus, transferring the weight of the transducer um, from the probe to my thumb, and then my thumb to the front side of the malleolus, and that keeps the probe from pushing down so much. So give that a try when you get in front of your machine, and maybe it'll improve your dynamic lateral ankle exam. But everything stays right where it's supposed to be. So we're going to relax. Very nice. And let's keep following these tendons distally now. So now we're at 19 megahertz. There should be no question which tendon is which. Um, so we have B for bone. Brevis for bone is the lowest one here. Right here, actually. Pernius longus has this muscle belly coming off of it. So if you're ever confused which is which, Pernius longus has the muscle belly with a more distal There we go. We're going to just keep following the superficial guy. Actually, that was Brevis. Yeah, wow. I got, I got turned around. But that's the beauty of ultrasound. We get to trace these things out. So, um, Brevis here. This little thin slip. That makes a lot more sense, actually, because this tendon, which is still tendon, is going to go all the way up to the proximal fibular neck. So that would be Prenius longus uh, superficially, Prenius brevis, deep. And I should have just remembered what I was taught. B for bone, brevis for bone is the one on the bottom here. All right, so now we have the, the Prenius brevis sitting on top of that fibulocalcaneal ligament. Look how nice that ligament looks. With 19 megahertz, we can actually trace that ligament back here posteriorly to the calcaneus very nicely. Prenius brevis is the one that we're going to focus on here, so it's this oval here. All right, so now it's um, it's on the more dorsal aspect of that pronial tubercle. All right. And this is where we see the two Prenius longus, Prenius brevis uh, take a different direction. So Prenius brevis will stay centered in the screen and remain shallow. Prenius uh, longus will dive through that cuboid groove uh, to the base of the first metatarsal. But here we are at the base of the fifth metatarsal and cross-sectionally evaluating that Prenius brevis. Really, really nice. Let's go long axis and just kind of confirm our work. Okay, so screen left, base of the fifth. And then here we have really, really nicely Prenius brevis tendon. Let's chase it proximally. We're at the pronial tubercle level because I can feel it under the transducer. And then we're going to see this oval right here, this crisscrossing shadow, and that's Prenius longus coming into view. And now they're going to they're going to pair up and run in tandem up to the malleolus. And that's where we see these two guys there. So uh, superficially, if we trace this shadow here, proximal to the pronial tubercle, the superficial guy is the pronius longus, the deep one that was sitting on top of that calcaneo fibular ligament, which is this in cross section. You guys remember that ligament that we were looking at right here that looked like a hammock for these tendons? That's providing kind of this inflection point for the tendons to take a, a little bit of a different turn also. But here's calcaneo fibular ligament in cross section. Beautiful 19 megahertz image. And let's just keep following each of these. So now, um, let's follow the shallow one, or the superficial guy here. So this will be Prenius longus. It's going to take a turn and wrap around the cuboid groove. And I'm going to have to dig 
for angle here into the foot, but it's, it's trying to dive into the deeper soft tissues. And on this 19 megahertz transducer, if you feel like you've lost penetration at about a centimeter and a half, I will say uh, it's worth going over here to your, to your menus on more controls, uh, toggle down to THI and turn that THI off. And we'll get a little bit more penetration out of this transducer. Turn our gain up a little bit and I'll just toggle on off. I'm going to point out the Proneus longus as it jumps that gap. So here's Proneus longus, long axis. And then I'll toggle off the THI, just so you know, from a scanning standpoint, we're, we're looking for lower frequency echoes in the far field of the image. When we're shallow at 19 megahertz, a THI makes a lot more sense. But when we're deep and we're trying to, trying to reach these tissues with the probe that we have, um, toggling that on off just to, just to see what you can see. Now, if pathology, uh, if symptoms warrant scanning any further distal, go ahead and chase it to the base of the fifth metatarsal, uh, or to the base of the first, I should say, on the far reach of the arch of the foot. And we can do that real quick. I'm going to switch back over to my L15. It's a great place uh, to show the differences in uh, why, it's, why it's nice to have both. But we're going to go over here to the arch. Uh, left side of the screen will be towards the base of the first. And let's find those structures. There we go. So we can see the uh, base of the base of the first right here. Kind of hard to see uh, camera wise just how far over I am. There we are, right where the arrow is, base of the first. And it's just neat to see how long that tendon really is. And I'm obliquely um, orienting the transducer all the way to the malleolus, basically. But that's it right there. This is it. Uh, this is the Prentice longest exiting that cuboid groove. Coming out, fanning out just a bit. And it will insert on the base of the first and some fibers uh, to the medial most undersurface of the, the medial cuneiform. All right, so one scanning tip also while we're back here on the posterior malleolus. Don't scan these perineal tendons straight up and down like this when you're doing your long axis um, shot. You will catch the tendons okay, and they do look like tendons up here. But to get a good image in reference to where we need to be scanning, I want you to pin the tendons between their bony backboard, which is this retromalleolar groove of the fibula, by laying the transducer relatively towards the Achilles, right here, and then pinching those tendons between the, the fibula and your transducer. So you end up with this really, really nice picture. Just like that. So here's the two tendons stacked on top of each other. It's kind of hard to see the difference between the two, uh, two tendons, except when we leave. Yeah. Once I start fanning more, more posteriorly, we see the difference between the two tendons. But once you're right up here on the retromalleolar groove, it is a little bit more difficult. But that is a big scanning pearl for catching a really nice clean image of these uh, peroneal tendons and long axis at the proximal part of the exam. Once you go distal to the fibula, you're just gonna plant the probe on that, on that fibula and use it as a pivot point. Right there, so screen right is our fibula. Screen left is the pivoting portion of the exam. And there we have our tendons taking their two different angles right there. Cross-sectional fibulo calcaneal, uh, calcaneal fibular ligament, sorry, CFL, is right here. So you don't want to call that scar tissue or anything like that. That's just a cross-sectional ligament. We can, we can show that by doing a, a split screen. Take that shot right there and go long axis, same, same zone. There we are. So you can see that ligament long axis really nicely here, short axis here. So don't call that an area of pathology. That is just a ligament. It's normal to see that amount of fluid. What we shouldn't see is fluid that is circumferential around the tendons. So you want to float the gel 
distal to the malleolus and cross-section to the tendons and look for those tendon sheaths to be full of effusion right around that proneal tubercle. Here, proneal tubercle. See a little retinaculum wrapping around it, a little shadow from that retinaculum. And then chase those tendons distal. You can see one already trying to go superficial, so that's proneus brevis and proneus longus takes the deeper dive at that point. So that's it for the lateral ankle exam. And we'll go ahead and let you guys queue up those questions in the chat portal. So go to the Q&A, type your questions. This is a live webinar, and you, this is your chance to go ahead and ask those questions. In the recording, we typically don't post uh, the questions, so don't feel pressured that, that you shouldn't type in any questions because of um, getting in the way of the webinar or anything like that. This is a great time to go ahead and ask those questions. I'm going to keep scanning uh, 19 megahertz just to really show off these tendons and ligaments really nicely while we wait for those questions to come in and uh, we'll have Chris close us out. But thank you for joining us. As Daniel said, uh, now you can uh, go ahead and put uh, questions in the QA box now. Uh, it should be at the bottom or the side of your screen. Uh, so we'll wait just a little bit for those to come in. Uh, Daniel, is there anything else that you kind of wanted to show everybody? You know, we, we covered a lot. Uh, this, of course, was the final of the ankle series. So your Q&A could pertain to really any, any part of the ankle and we'll go ahead and cover it. So just to kind of close the series out, um, I do want you guys to be um, sending us feedback. Um, you, can, you can do that through this Q&A portal or email me at daniel.shelton at fujifilm.com about the content you'd like in future webinars. So we've concluded the diagnostic session, um, which we did the shoulder, elbow, hand and wrist, and then we've done the hip, knee, and then we've just concluded with the ankle. Um, I would anticipate that we'll still have some to look at on the foot. Uh, we would like to explore a series on nerves, and then we'll be doing a procedural series that will be um, basically moderated by myself, but having guest physicians on um, showing their pearls and how they do procedures. So um, that's the next, I would say, calendar year, maybe even year and a half um, on the menu for, for these webinar topics. They'll be interactive or you can ask these questions um, through the Q&A portal. Uh, they are all going to have live demonstrations and many of them are going to have guest, um, guest physicians. So we look forward to having you guys come on and ask those questions. But uh, for today, you know, ask those questions. Go ahead and ask us to review anything. Uh, we'll go over it. I have the slides still pulled up. Uh, if you total all these slides up, let me, let me cruise back to the slide deck here. You'll see uh, look, that it does look like we have a question in here. All right, go ahead. Uh, they'd like to know, uh, please show what is the easiest and most direct site for lateral ankle injections. Oh, all right. So that, that answers my suspicion that we do need an injection series. Okay. So from a injection approach, I'm okay showing how to access a joint intraarticularly or peritendinous sheath injections or bursal injections um, from, a, from localizing anatomy where I'm going to reach my limit is what to inject, why, um, what to expect out of it, the mixtures. Um, you know, I can speak a little bit to what fits in a needle selection and what's appropriate for certain sites, but um, that I, I think just with this being our first question right out of the gates uh, confirms my suspicion, Chris, we need an ankle or not an ankle. We need a procedures webinar, but to access the ankle joint proper, I just show people anywhere you see cartilage around the talus, you're going to catch yourself in the joint. So here we are with the lateral fibula in view right here. Here's the talus with the cartilage. Here's the ATFL. So we see that ligament really nicely stretching across the screen. Underneath that ligament is the ankle joint. You have the cartilage of the talus. If we just climb a little bit further anterior, you don't have to pop through the ligament and you don't want to trickle any steroids into the connective tissue, but this is fat. So this is just a wedge of fat that borders the joint. You can make the fat move with your finger and decide where the articular surface is. 
And uh, I see people either coming in from this side where the perineal tendons end from the malleolus side. You can just go right over that little fat wedge into the joint um, where that where that fat is. I think the most common sense approach is to do a, um, a center line, which is where you activate that feature on your machine, uh, avoid hitting vessels or anything like that. And then you would just drop the needle out of plane right under the arrow into that same space of the ankle joint. You can inject anteriorly. So we're going to roll our model's foot face you. You just end up with other, you know, big reds in, in view, like the dorsalis pittus artery. Um, but I, I would say that's a pretty common approach is to come anterior, see the cartilage of the talus. Anywhere you see the cartilage of the talus is intraarticular and you can drop your needle. I would advise you go off to the side of the extensor digitorum up here and not to the side of the dorsalis pittus. So you want to stay maybe a little bit more lateral. So if you're a little bit more lateral, you can go from distal to proximal. If you're pretty obsessed about seeing your needle the entire way, or I still find people that will just um, find the, I think we're right at the extensor digitorum here. And then if you go off to the side of the tendon, you catch just muscle belly and that won't, that won't uh, drag your needle so bad. And uh, you can just slip the needle out of plane right down into the ankle joint there. But anywhere you see the talus and the talus cartilage bordering the tibia, you're going to access the intraarticular space of the of the um, proper ankle joint. Good question. Hopefully it's an icebreaker. Hopefully we get more people asking yep, we, questions on. We've got one more here. Um, acute injury with lots of swelling. What are the best strategies to view partial versus complete rupture of ATFL? Um, compared to the other side. So if you're looking at an athlete, Pretty often they have trashed ankles, so don't get too excited when you see disruptions in the ATFL or swelling in the ATFL. It's not always because of that particular day, but I think of uh, swelling being like a loaded paintbrush. Like our, our ligament on the screen right now is very thin and parallel, and it's um, by parallel I mean its superficial border is parallel with its uh, deep border. Now, when you see one side or the other or the middle loaded up like a paintbrush uh, full of fluid where it shouldn't be and it's asymmetrical, if you see all the fibers, you've got an acute inflammation. If you don't see the fibers and you see homogeneous, basically echoes, instead of linear longitudinal striations, uh, when they become homogeneous and non-fibrillar, you're looking at a degenerative condition. Typically, you want to throw your color power Doppler on at that point and see if you have um, chronic inflammation that has set into those degenerated fibers. When you have an acute tear that just occurred hours prior, uh, it shouldn't light up with all the Doppler crazy um, inflammation that you would expect. You'd expect it to light up and just be all kinds of angry and upset. But in, in reality, it takes a little while for all that to set in. And um, sometimes the edema around it can kind of distort the image a little. Sometimes it can help the image a little in an area that needs a little acoustic enhancement, but um, great question. So in short, if it's an acute injury, I see fibers, but they're swollen away from each other. If it's chronic, I, I don't see fibers with the swelling. And I typically see lots of hyperemia, uh, color Doppler activity, like this little group of vessels. I would put that on as a, as a baseline, basically throw your color on, see if you can dial your machine into a surrounding small vessel. Like, I think I should get more flow than I am. So I'm just going to go down to my color scale a bit and make the color Doppler a little bit more sensitive. I'm going to turn my gain up a little bit until I see noise underneath the bone. So bring your Doppler box down underneath the cortex. And when you see all that noise, you just wanna reduce your gain and then take that same color parameter over the injured site or over the chronic inflammation site and see if you have uh, signs of uh, tendinosis with uh, hyperemia. But it takes a couple of days, if not, yeah, I'd say a couple of days before you start seeing the inflammation really angry in a tear site. Where, it, where it's sending those little healing vessels, those neo vessels uh, into the area. Excellent question. Uh, All right. Well, on, on, a light, on a lighter note, this is hilarious, you know, since we probably won't record the webinar um, or the, the questions on the webinar. I was looking at the sural nerve of, a few months ago on this particular model, right? But here's the sural nerve just to have fun with it. So here's Achilles. Kager fat pad, 
And then here's the sural nerve. And then look at these little veins, top and bottom. And then I had a little bit of fun. If I caught it at the, the right slice, we caught a big smiley face across the screen and this guy started blinking at us. <laughs> that was funny. There's uh, you know, got to, got to find humor in what you're doing. Live webinar, got to have a little fun with it. And we'll probably clip this off the recording, but yeah, this is a happy little sural nerve. So we've got the two eyes and <laughs> here's the nerve right there. Happy All Tuesday, right? That's right. All right. Well, it looks like there's no more questions coming in. Uh, so uh, everybody, just a reminder, uh, this was the last in a four-part series about ankle ultrasound. Uh, so if you'd like to catch up on the previous three, you can go to our webinars page on sonosite.com. And uh, we'll also be announcing some more webinars soon. Uh, so keep an eye on that webpage for more details. Uh, so thank you so much, Daniel, for taking the time to put together this presentation. Uh, we appreciate you sharing your expertise with the audience. And thank you, everybody, so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. We'll see you at the next one. Thank you, everybody.